go into the warehouse storage, and that's the fat stores. And that's where you start getting a lot of that central weight gain, and that's where you start becoming more resistant to weight loss because your insulin levels are high. Remember, insulin is a storage hormone. So when insulin levels are chronically high, glucagon, remember that back a couple slides back, that's your releasing hormone becomes suppressed. You're out of balance. You have too much insulin. You've got unstable blood sugar. You've got suppressed glucagon. You've got these stress hormones going off, causing you to be craving stuff at night. You have to get it under control. So what do you do? You, you get in, you start eating better carbohydrates, the whole food sources. Instead of eating the donuts in the morning, or the bagels, or the, or the processed cereal, you start to eat fruit. You start to eat some protein. You throw in maybe an omelet, maybe some Greek yogurt. You throw in maybe some, uh, some old-fashioned oatmeal, or, you, you, or some healthier cereal. And all of a sudden, now your blood sugar does this. It's like a time-release drug. Now, now you're releasing carbohydrate at a slower rate into your bloodstream, much like a time-release drug. You guys have all seen time-release drugs. The whole point behind time-release drugs is to release it slowly so your body can metabolize it and use it effectively. Instead of just throwing tons and tons of tidal waves of sugar into it, now you're here, this dotted line, your time release, and guess what? You're not hungry. Your energy is consistent throughout the day. Weight loss becomes easier. Your body is literally programmed much and much easier to burn and release fat. And you're not sitting here feeling like you're starving on your diet, you know, where a lot of people sit. So, kind of looking at that account, remember back in the 90s we had the fat-free diet? That was the big thing. What did they take the fat out? What did they replace it with? Typically, sugar. And what does sugar do? A lot of sugar, this is, this is what it was doing. Even though people were cutting their calories, they were cutting their calories, they're doing tons of cardio, and they're still not losing weight because they're doing this, because their body is literally not programmed correctly. And if it worked, if the fat free diets worked, why is our obesity rate up to almost 70, or our overweight, we're at 70%, and now our obesity rate's approaching one, one out of three Americans are considered clinically obese. I mean, if the fat free diets would work, why aren't they around anymore? So, you know, whole foods, you know, even when I go back to when we do our grocery tours, get something that has a little bit of fat and protein in it versus fat free. You know, when you start looking at yogurts and dairy products and stuff like that, a lot of them take all the fat out. Get, start looking at the labels. Look at the sugar content of the fat-free stuff. Usually it's a lot higher. So the real enemy I think most people really got to deal with is sugar. Sugar is, I, I almost like to think it's like crap. It's almost like people get addicted to it and you have to get off of it. I mean, I almost would treat it like a drug addiction for some people. And that's what keeps people heavy. That's what keeps people on this cycle of, of a roller coaster. And that's what keeps them not losing weight and getting frustrated. So it's not just about calories in, it's calories, it, there's calories out. And I'm going to email out some good follow-up articles on this that we use with people, um, just on this glycemic indexing. But if the one thing you can talk about, if you're, one of your goals, and like I said, especially if your goal is weight loss, you need to get off the roller coaster. And we're going to talk about some steps to do that. If you're an athlete, and you're not, maybe your body fat or your weight's not really high yet, but if you do this, and then all of a sudden you get in the middle of your competition and you do this, that's like bonking, that's where you kind of hit the wall. I had a client come in today who didn't eat the right, hasn't been eating very good lately, just kind of got back into this, hit the wall after through the workout, had to sit down with a light head and blood sugar dropped on That's what happens. So it's not just important for weight loss, it's also for performance too. You know, parents when you have your kids in sports, think about what you're feeding them before sports. You don't want the kid, you know, I know Doug's got kids in traveling, just like my, my stepson's in traveling. You know, you've got three, four games back to back. You want this to come, you know, all of a sudden game two, you hit this, the kids, all of a sudden the kid's in a fog because his blood sugar drops. So start thinking about this not just for yourself, but also for your families as well. Uh, this is a pretty key concept, and this is why we're seeing type 2 diabetes in kids these days. You know, look at what they're, what they're doing. You've got all these energy drinks, all these things loaded with sugar that they're taking in. And, you know, we shouldn't see type 2. Type 2 diabetes is something that's completely curable. This is, this, is the next, this is the step that moves you towards it, though. Once you get into insulin abuse, insulin resistance, that's moving you closer to getting into type 2 diabetes. So, really important concept. You can't emphasize it enough. You're okay. There's two ways we rate carbohydrates, too, and you'll hear these two. Glycemic index, how fast the food raises your blood sugar. Glycemic load means the power punch that it packs. And I'll send you some articles and more on this, but just kind of keep these in. When you hear glycemic index, it's, it was developed back in the early 80s, basically. The 100 on the glycemic index is what pure table sugar will raise your blood sugar. So everything's in relation to that. So if something scores 23 on the glycemic index, that means it's 20, it will raise your blood uh, sugar 23% as much as pure table sugar. And don't worry about the numbers and stuff. Just keep
keep these terms in your head because there's two ways we rate them. Because you can have a carrot, which has a high glycemic index, but carrots don't have hardly any carbohydrates in it, so it doesn't have a very high glycemic load, so it doesn't really pack a lot of punch. You can have a Snickers bar, which its glycemic index is a little bit lower than a, than a carrot, but it has more, it packs a better carbohydrate punch. So you have to look at the two in correlation. And so we look at both of these, and we look at combining these two. And when I send out an article following up after tonight, there's an article called Foods to Eat, and you'll see kind of how the, the foods stack up. They'll rate them by glycemic index and glycemic load. So after tonight, you'll want to just take a look at that. You don't have to know the numbers exactly, just to get a basic understanding. Because you guys probably go to the store and you see what, low glycemic, low glycemic, low glycemic. And you, you know, what I, my, my hope is that you really understand what does that mean? You know, what does a low glycemic food mean? Because a lot of people just, you know, hit, and I pick up my mom, but my mom just grabs something. I heard it was good. Why is it good? You know, hopefully when you get to the same week jumpstart, you're a little more savvy and smart when it comes to your nutrition. So when you go to the store, you don't buy into the marketing hype. You make better choices when you're going out shopping for yourself and your family. These are just some numbers here. What's a low glycemic index below 40% or 40, moderate, 60, glycemic load less than 10, 10 to 20. So these are some numbers that you can that you can look at. You'll get you'll get an article, like I said, that's the classification. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that tonight because it's it's not important right now. What I want to get is the, is more of the basic concepts down. And like I said, food sources, whole food sources. Long grain wild rice. What else I didn't say? Fat free yogurt. Avoiding processed. So, your fruits, canned fruits. What are they canned fruits in? Sugar, typically. The syrup and the sugar. Even dehydrated, dehydrated things. Now, there's a little point I want to make on that. Does that mean you shouldn't eat raisins or craisins? I think they're good if you mix them in with, if you want to put some raisins in your oatmeal or put some craisins on your salad, mix them in with some good proteins and carbs. I'm not saying just don't, don't shovel them on a handful on their own. So look at the whole makeup of a meal because a lot of times, um, if you have a high glycemic food like a, a dehydrated raisin, you can use them as a garnish you, or something like that. It doesn't mean that you don't, you don't have to take them in, but it's just like I see people use that as a snack. You start shoveling handful after handful in. Um, most packaged stuff, crackers, pretzels. I heard a, a, a doctor once say, if you go to a party and you put a bowl of pretzels next to a bowl of apples, which bowl do you need to keep refilling? I mean, how many times have you ever said, hey, I just polished out that bag of apples? You know, it doesn't happen because apples are a low glycemic food. That's a good way to kind of, you know, determine, does that carb, can I eat that carbohydrate? Does it make me feel satisfied? I mean, I don't know if I've ever, been, ever eaten like five apples, you know, I don't know, I think I've ever used one, maybe two. Even when I was a kid picking them out the tree, I ate two, but, but um, just to be a, you know, even like frozen yogurt, you know, frozen yogurt, people think, what's so much better than ice cream? Well, it's basically all sugar. There's no fat in it. So if I was going to say the less, lesser of two evils, probably ice cream because there's a little bit of fat in it. Remember I said fat kind of slows down that blood sugar, even though it's not the best kind of fat. But I would really look at your sugar content if you're going to look at one thing to start with. What about calorie restriction? People like, oh, calories in, calories out. I heard a guy from a nutrition company say this at one of these things. I just don't buy it. Um, most of the research I, I, and the most people I see when I look at food journals, when people don't eat the right things, they tend to eat more. And I'll talk about a study coming up here. 3,500 calories of excess or de uh, deficit will actually gain or lose a pound of fat. So, for example, if I burn 250 calories a day 